something dear to my heart that I want to talk about. And it is salvation by grace, not by works. The reason I want to talk about that today is the Lord had put on my heart. I see too much confusion about salvation. Uh, and I hate to say it that most people do not have it right. But what you do know is important and for you to retain it and keep it uh, because uh, you are at least on the right track, but there's not a full understanding. My intent today is to break down that understanding so that uh, you will have a better understanding of your salvation. You will understand it even more. When you see the salvation at work in others and that you'll be able to know when things are not properly quoted according to scripture when it speaks about our salvation. Um, I want us to take a moment and look at this. When I say salvation is by grace and not by works, that indicates there's two areas that we need to understand. The salvation of grace and the works of the law or by the law. We need to fully understand that so that we know how to uh, apply it in our lives and the lives of others. The one thing that is important before you could even understand the time frame between the difference of between the law and grace is you must understand when Christ was born. When Christ was born and when he was crucified, upon this earth it made a distinct difference between the law which is the old testament and the law of grace which is called the church age we need to understand that and my intent is to try to break that down for you here at this time before grace was founded and get your pencils and papers ready because i got a lot of scriptures as usual some will be on here but before we can talk about grace, we need to understand, I mean, the law, we need to understand that the law that we're talking about was the making of the, the Levitical laws, which is the Moses and the law, which is around 1440 BCE. The E stands for air, BC, before Christ's heir. You need to know that because the law was not even in effect when Adam and Eve came on the scene. It wasn't there. There was no law uh, before Adam and Eve. So Adam and Eve did not live under a law or under grace during this period prior to the Levitical laws. The Levitical laws is approximately 2,000, 1,500, 2,000 years later after Adam and Eve. Now, there were some other guidelines that was used for man. Uh, his conscience was one of that time when they used as the law. But you see the reference made quite often, great deal of time in the Old Testament. That was because that's the only law that they had was the Levitical laws that was given by Moses. Now, there is another time wherein the law was actually written and put into a book, which we would call the Torah, which was written about 315 to 250 years before Christ. And the reason that there was a difference is because in the Jewish uh, laws, uh, the actual the the priests uh the levites and all of them and the construction of what they were living under they put it in writing which these writings are made up from the levitical laws of moses that's where we get this 613 levitical laws that i have given to you before passed around and shown you that we are that they lived under in the old testament time Keep that in mind, the Old Testament time. So in that time frame, they lived night and day. They read it. They taught their children the laws which they were governed to 
for them to live by. <coughs> Excuse me. When Christ came, we're going to find the passages, and I won't give it to you. When Christ said that we're no longer under the law. However, the confusion that I'm referencing is that because of the Torah and many other translations of scriptures, many people did not live up to the laws of Christ because the Jews did not accept Christ in the place that J Jesus did away. And I ought to not let me put it that way. It is not that he did away, but Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses, which was the Old Testament. But he brought on a new law, which was the law of grace after his uh, re resurrection and after the crucifixion. However, many people never let go of the Levitical laws. And they try to make it applicable even today, which that is incorrect. For if you are actually not going to accept the law of grace, then that means you are remaining under the law, which cannot save you. Because the law could not save man. It only gave or pointed to your sins. That's for punishment. Only could tell you that it was wrong about what you did. That problem still consists even in the churches today. The law is things that you do. God's grace is not under the law. His grace is by his blood, which he shed for us. The law means those are deeds and actions that man does. That's governed by the law. The law not being able to save you, but grace did. When Christ came, he died for your sins. Your sins are only defined by the law. When Christ, when you accept Christ as your savior and Christ died for your sins, sins are only identified through the law. Then when Christ did away with your sins, he did away with the power of the law in your life the law meant i thought wrong oh that's a sin people are equating that today as losing your salvation you if losing your salvation was built upon act then god's grace has been null and void because your actions no longer qualify you for your salvation under the law of grace i hope you caught all of that now let's look at that if you want to turn to your bibles i don't mind that you do you will find some of these very things in your studies in my chart above i kind of broke it down so that you could see where the levitical laws were used and when grace came in effect which is called the church age Romans, the eighth chapter, starting at verse 14, says this, For sin shall not have dominion over you. This is what I was speaking of. Sin no longer has dominion over the child or the person who has accepted Christ as their personal Savior, whom Christ died for your sins and paid for your sins by his blood. Let's continue on with that verse. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. Two specific things. Verse 15. Ask a question. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? That's a question. The answer is, God forbid. Verse 16. Know ye not that whom ye Yield yourself servants to obey. His servants are ye to whom you obey. So if you choose to obey by the Levitical laws, then you are not accepting the laws 
of grace because you can't have both. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Let's go back. Whether of sin unto death. If you believe it's a sin, then you govern yourselves by the Levitical laws because the Levitical laws is what points and identifies your sin. If you live under that, then that and want to accept that, that's what you are living by the laws. The next point says after the comma or of obedience unto righteousness. If you are obedient unto God, you no longer unto the the uh, the laws, Levitical laws. Therefore, if you no longer under the Levitical laws, you are no longer capable of performing sins. Let's keep that in your mind. Verse 17, but God be thanked that ye are the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from your heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. You lived under it because you didn't know no better, because that's what's been taught you. This is why I have to come to you with the word of God and break it down for a better understanding. People confuse God's word with a, a lot of different foreign uh, interpretations. I'm not giving you interpretations. I'm giving you the scripture according to it is in the Bible. Verse 18, being then made free, free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. Do you, do you understand what's being said there? Being then made free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. These are very important verses. You got to write, write them down so that you can understand. My fingers are getting by, getting around faster than my. Okay, there we are. Romans 10, 3 says, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness, who is they, whoever does not understand the scriptures and do not understand that in the scriptures that your righteousness based upon God and his power and laws rather than the law of Moses that was given to him in the Old Testament prior to Christ's coming. For being, by they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their what? Own righteousness. Have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. This is why it is so important that you understand what the scriptures say. Let's back up just a quick moment. When I was teaching Sunday school this morning, this subject also came across my mind and I had to deal with it. And it was in the understanding that people run to man to get an understanding of God's words. Well, that is acceptable according to the law, what the word and the scriptures say. There are some who were called to teach, some to preach. Uh, there was a calling on their life. But there are so many people who do not have a calling on on your life, on their life by God. Somebody called them, but wasn't God. When God calls you, you have the burden of truth to follow God's law. OK. When Christ died upon the cross, the Bible says that the veil of the temple was rent. What that meant was that the man no longer has to run to a bishop or to a Levite or to some preachers or, or pastors to understand God's word. You are now able to accept God's word straight from God and through his word in the scriptures. Man, over the time, has twisted God's word for the purpose of establishing kingdoms and priesthoods for the money, for position and titles. You don't have to go through man to understand God's word. 
since the veil of the temple is rent, you can now do what the priests and the Levites have done. Whereas they stood in the gap for you between God and you, the veil of the temple rent, 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 excuse me, which opened the, the, the veil so that the, the Levite and the priests are no longer needed for to be an intercessory between you and God. You can pray and talk to God yourself. Now, many pastors, preachers, bishops, and all of them don't want you to feel like that because they want you to feel that they're the ones who's in power over you. But that is so incorrect. It is good when you can find someone who can stand on the, in the gap on behalf of Christ to help interpret and understand his word, which gives you deeper meaning, but I don't stay in the gap for you. I'm just trying to show you how to get to Christ yourself so that you and Christ can commune together as one. Verse 4 of Romans 10, for Christ is the end, please listen to that, of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describes the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. That was what was given Moses for that time for people to live in, which is the heir of the people, the Old Testament, prior to Christ's coming. It was in preparation of what you could do and needed to do before Christ came, who when he came, took all of this upon himself so that there was no need for you to go get you a donkey, a chicken, a bird, or a, a, a quail or whatever to cast your sins upon and, and use them as an escape, go and leave. No, that time period is gone. Christ is here and he bared all your burdens. And everything that the donkey, the, the jackass, the, the quail, and all those others could not do for you, Christ has done it. He did it for you. So now Christ has come with a, a new commandment, which is his grace, his new law, his grace. So you don't have to worry about the things that the Old Testament people did. That's over. That's why when Christ died, when he was in the grave, and if you've been in my study, you know that while he was yet in the grave, he went down into the depths of the earth and went into paradise, into, uh, into hell, Shul, and got those that had died prior to his coming, but yet lived a righteous life according to the law before Christ came. Now that Christ is here, he went down into the depths of hell and, and went into paradise and got all of those that were waiting on his coming. He ascended up into heaven after his resurrection and all those souls that were there waiting are now with him in heaven. That's the power of grace, but the power of the law could not do that. Romans 7 verse 6 says, but now we are delivered. These are not my words. These are the words of Christ, of, of, of his people, his, his, his uh, disciples and the other prophets and those that were there. But now we are delivered from the law that being dead were in, we were in hell that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. It's a new day. We ought to be proud of it. Be thankful unto God for what he's done for us. Romans 3.27 says, where is boasting then? That's the question mark. Is it excluded? By what law? Question. By what works? Question. Nay, but by the law of faith. Verse 28 says, therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without 
the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. That means, yes, of the Jews and the Gentiles. You'd have to understand the confusion and the problems that went on when God, when Jesus himself included the Gentiles in salvation, which the Jews thought was only theirs alone. They didn't accept that. They didn't like it at all. Verse 20, uh, verse 30, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith, the uncircumcision through faith. Verse 31, do we then make void the law through faith? That's a question. God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. That means. What the law could not do, grace has done. But because Christ now lives within us, we are still a reflection of God's law in the flesh. And we portray the goodness of the law through our life because we are now saved. Galatians 5, 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. So what is your makeup? What drives you? Your love for God is an indication that you've been led by the Spirit. And if you're led by the Spirit, then the power of the law cannot influence you. Galatians 3, 10, for as many are, are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, listen to this, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of law to them. The law is a curse. Living under the law now, when we are to be living under grace, that is a curse, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. Your faith is what God is relying upon you to live the life that shows evident that you are saved by grace. And by being that, you are no longer under the law because the law could not justify your, your, your sins. Verse 12, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. So if you want to written, live by some written text, something that's in the book, something that says, mm, you did this, that's a sin. Oh, you went there, that's a sin. Or you, 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 you acted like this. That's a sin. These are all things which are evident in your life through works. But you're no longer under the law. So you, the works of the law cannot take away or strengthen your salvation. But we must learn to live by faith. The, verse 12, and the law is not by faith, but the man that doeth them shall live by them. We need to understand that because we, the church age, living today, is under the church of grace, uh, under the church age, under the law of grace. However, when Christ raptures the church out of here, the church is no longer present. Neither is God's grace. The people who remain after grace as removed now goes back to the power of the law. So when you go through the tribulation period, you are now working and living under the works of the law. And the works of the law could not save you. You got to stay tuned because we're getting ready to go into the millennium shortly. I mean, we've been in the tribulation. We're going to the millennium and we're going to show you how the, the importance of the law 
ruled during the time of the tribulation period, which the tribulation period was primarily for the the Jews who rejected Christ, since they rejected Christ, now you got to go through the tribulation period and everything you do and you think will be judged based upon your works because grace is already gone. That's another story. We're going to get into that. Uh, we got to talk about that some more. We're going to then talk about the millennium and we already talked about the new Jerusalem. Uh, but I got some more to show you in there because I have uncovered the understanding of how people will be saved during the tribulation and how some of those that go through the tribulation and make it will also go into the millennial period. We got a lot of studying to do, so just be ready. All right, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. The very first verse I gave you was... Uh, verse 10, for as many are of the works of the law are under the curse, for it is written. Verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. We no longer have to be hanging on a tree because Christ took that curse upon himself for us so that we can receive him unto ourselves and he can receive us unto himself. We are under the law of grace. Grace does not build its salvation upon your works. So that's what that is meaning. So let's look at this briefly. Making of the Levitical laws, which we saw. We know that now we're no longer under that law. It's, it's wiped out. We're now under the law of grace. So under the law of grace, 1 John 3, 4 says, Whosoever committeth transgressions also transgresses also the law, for the sin is the transgression of the law. And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. As we, If we are Christians, we need to quit telling one another that we have sinned and we're going to die and go to hell because of what we've done. No. Because God's word does not say that anywhere. It says that we're no longer under the law, which is the law is the only way you can point to a person's sin. Verse 5, and you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. In him is no sin. Verse 6, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth had not seen him nor known him i hope that makes sense to you as we go on galatians 3 18 for if the inheritance be of the law it is no more of promise but god gave it to abraham by promise the law was given unto abraham Abraham existed and did all of this 1,400 year, years before Christ. That was given to law by promise. It was asked for. Abraham asked. God gave it. Verse 19. Wherefore then service the law? Question. It was added because of transgressions till the seed shall come to whom the promise was made, which is Christ Jesus. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Question mark. God forbid, forbid. For if there had been a law given, which could have given life, verily, righteousness should have been by the law but it couldn't that's why it, it, it couldn't be made that way verse 22 but the scripture hath concluded all under sin that the promise by faith in jesus christ might be given to them that believe take that you believers understand that verse 23 but before faith came you hear that before faith came, before Christ came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. 
which we understand it after Christ's coming. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaker to bring us to Christ. It was a way to educate us and to understand in Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after the faith is come, Christ Jesus, we are no longer under the school ma master, which was the law. For we are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. J James 2.10 said, For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend one point, he is guilty of them all. So those who lived under the law could never abide by the law because if you were guilty of one, you was guilty of them all. So it was impossible to live the life that Christ wants you to live under by living under the law of grace. That's why Christ came to deliver us from that authority. The new authority is Christ Jesus. Matthew 5, 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law, all the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That's what Christ did. Verse 18. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one jit or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. That means, as I said earlier, we are now the examples of the law in our lives. So the law still has a purpose. And after we're gone, the law will still reside upon earth through the tribulation because God has yet uh, uh, destroyed the heavens and the earth and gave us a new heaven and a new earth. Till that comes, the law still has a value. 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. You need to dissect that one uh, place. That meant there were those who misunderstood and still did not understand, but they still made it to the kingdom. But they was the least in the kingdom of heaven. But those who understood such as I'm bringing to you for now for greater, you will be considered great in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 24, I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. You cannot live under the laws that the scribes and the, the Pharisees who were the religious instructors, the religious teachers of that day. Christ is telling you that you must be beyond them, be more than them in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 21, ye have heard that it was said to them of old time, thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. I'm not going into that right now. That's another different subject, which we will go into uh, at another time. I'm hoping that you understand the necessity that salvation by grace is what we live under now. We no longer live under the law. I hope everybody can understand the significance of your life. Stop allowing people to tell you, oh, you got to be saved again. Again, there is nowhere in scripture where it speaks of you being saved again. Or there are those who have done wrong, but that's not considered sin in the sight of God. But it is considered something you need to repent from. Why do you need to repent? Because if you don't repent of your sins, the sins that are governed by the law. Remember, he said he didn't do away with the law. He came to fulfill the law. Those things that show you how you are to live a life. If you allow those narrow negative things to be a part of your Christian life, it takes you away from God's growth in your life. It tears down your faith. It tears down your grace. It tears down your, your mercy. And you start looking like the rest of the world. Before God loses you to Satan and the world, he will take you out of this world and bring you unto himself. Now you know in your studies that the works that you do after you save, you get rewards for those in heaven. 
you get rewards from the one who paid for your life through your grace and your mercy that you have through your works, all your actions and your deeds that are not selfish, but done for the glory of God. God will give you a great reward. He'll give you crowns. And there's other positions in heaven that you will get. We will learn during the time of the millennial period and in the new Jerusalem that are yours. But if you allow the world and its conditions and Satan to take away the good that you've done, you will not have these positions, nor these rewards, or these crowns, because you allow Satan to steal it from you. We cannot allow a Satan to take our joy. We need to understand God bought us with the price. We must live that life that God wants us to live, a life that is pleasing to him. Why? Because he has great things for you in heaven. He wants you to do well. He wants to reward you. But you need to get the message straight so that you don't trip and fall over all of these different interpretations, all these different guidelines that different religions have. Don't get into that. Go to the Bible. I gave you the scriptures to read. I gave you understanding for you to know that God will be with you always. How how long? always so that the glory of God can live and radiate in your life so that you can be a great value to him in his kingdom favorite part of mine unmute your mics if you got questions or something you don't understand talk to me I'm ready to hear what you got to say <laughs>